we get to have this transformational conversation around forgiveness and forgiveness the bitterness that it can actually cause and not just harming you as a person because the greatest benefactor of, um, uh, of forgiveness is you as an individual, not anything else. But when it comes to relationships, I think we've had so many stories. We've had so many news stories. We've had so many village stories and community stories of how it has affected families, how it has affected relationships and dating, and how it has even affected, if you take it in a, a wider uh, perspective, even the work, you know, colleagues and, you know, people generally. So unforgiveness, I know it's something that we don't usually talk about they tell you to forgive you like i know i'm just you know giving up on them i'm just letting them go and not choosing to forgive and then you say no they've not apologized so we're going to dive into all that and i believe that we're going to have a very very beautiful conversation around that so i need you to be able to join us with your questions i need you to be able to join us with your contribution let's learn together and let's go in so i have apostle frank together with martha the beautiful Martha. Apostle Frank, yes. good to have you. Good to have you too. I know the journey of uh, uh, forgiveness is not a new one to you, being that you're a leader at community level, at church, and uh, as a family. So I believe this is something that we are um, going to benefit from. And welcome, Martha. Thank you. Thank you so much for honoring this invite and being with us to talk about forgiveness. I believe that we've all bumped into uh, scenarios where we need to forgive, and we've told a few people to even forgive, and a few people have told to us uh, to our faces, I'm not going to forgive, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kamweso nyue. I think in Luganda it comes out so mm -hmm. well, kamweso nyue. Si jakso nyue, but kamweso nyue. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want us to start off from the ground up. The issue of unforgiveness, where does it sprout from? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, dear viewers and uh, our host. Thank you so much. Uh, this is my wife, Martha. Mm -hmm. We've been Beautiful. married for uh, 18 years. 18 years. And uh, this December we shall be celebrating 19 years. Wow, congratulations. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. God has blessed us with four beautiful children. Mm. And uh, we are ministers of the gospel. We have a church in Entebbe called Wells of Revival Center Church. Mm. It's a young church mm. now making six years. Okay. And uh, God is blessing us. Amen. We've been in ministry quite a long time, mm. though the church, we started it recently. Mm. Yes, I'm happy for this great topic mm. uh, about unforgiveness. It's a very sensitive topic, and uh, it's one that we need to listen to mm. all the time mm. because it's, a, it's, a, it's a, an issue that touches hearts of people. Yes. And uh, me being a minister, I've ministered so many people. And one of the things you find is broken hearts mm. due to unforgiveness mm. and so many issues. Okay. Uh, my wife and I making 18 years, meaning we have had instances of forgiveness. Yes. Because there is no way you can live with somebody and you fail to hurt one another. Mm. In one way or the other, you find yourself stepping on the other's toes. Mm. Not intentionally, but mm. we are different people. Mm. But as you keep blending into the other, you find yourself, you know, uh, touching a certain area of the other person mm. where the person feels uncomfortable. Mm. And uh, we've learned how to forgive mm. because uh, we are different people. Some people are introverts, others are extroverts. Mm. The introverts like to keep issues in mm. their hearts. Like, they bottle them up. Yes, I'm mm. a person who is an introvert. And... Uh, when uh, something happens to me, it goes deep and I keep quiet, but it's eating me up slowly. Mm. But I realize that keeping issues in my heart is actually affecting me. Exactly. Not affecting the other Anyone person. Anyone else, yes. So we've grown up into that relationship with my wife because uh, I kept seeing her, you know, she's living her normal life. Mm -hmm just her personality, mm. but certain things were affecting me. Mm -hmm. And I'm being quiet and I'm like, why can't so you So how see? did you get to tell yourself that it's her normal life? Because I think where people really fail, especially in relationships, mm. is the acknowledgement of this person is not intentional about hurting me. Yes. They did not wake up with a mind of hurting me. They're just living their normal life. Yeah. That's how best they know how to live. Yeah. And because I am hurt, then I shouldn't just fight and fire them and fail to forgive 
How did you get to that place where you spoke to yourself? Yeah, I think it comes with maturity. Mm -hmm. And uh, also knowing that she's not a bad person. Mm -hmm. That is the, the best line. When we met, I knew she's a good person. Mm -hmm. So that also entered my mind that her behavior is not something she's doing intentionally to hurt me. She's living her normal life. Mm -hmm. And then I came to my realization, I'm like, why am I continuously having this? Hurting myself. Yes. <laughs> so I discovered that actually I was piercing myself, hurting myself. Because then she would continuously exactly. do these things because she's living her normal That's life. That's right. So I came to a conclusion that that is her life. But then also I began to open up to speak. Okay. Because if I don't speak, that this is hurting me. She's going to continue. She's not her going life. to stop. Yes. So, so you see how you go against nature. Yes. Your natural you is keep quiet. Yeah. Die with it. Yeah. Don't bother anyone else. Yeah. But the intentional you is like I need to speak up because exactly. if I don't speak up, then they're going to continuously press my wrong button. That's right. Without their knowledge. That's right. So. Wow. I began to speak out, not mm -hmm. in a critical way, mm -hmm. not in a judgmental way, mm -hmm. but in a way of love mm -hmm. to help her not to do certain things that may hurt me. Wow. And then she also began to realize that, oh, mm. this affects him. Mm. And then adjustments begin. Wow. So 18 years we've worked <laughs> 18 this time. years. I want to hear from, uh, from, from, from Martha. Uh, how has the journey been for you? Uh, just like Apostle has said, a few things uh, here and there that were not going right. Uh, did you ever feel at some point that he was doing things continuously and these things were just rubbing you the wrong way? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Like he said, um, the opposite. Mm -hmm. I'm an outgoing person, I'm free, and I make my life, and mm -hmm. I You're enjoy myself. You're the sanguine type. Yes. Yeah. 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 And loves the other quiet. Yeah. Loves, yeah. That's my life. Yeah. So, uh, oh, and I love it when I, I, I see opposites together. Yes. Because, <laughs> because one thing I've noticed with him is that he keeps issues to himself. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you may not know how he's feeling until you come, take a step, and come to inquire and find out what is happening. Okay. So that's how the life I was living and whatever was bothering him, bothering him I, I couldn't know until he opened up to speak and I'm like, well, it, what you're talking about is something I was taking to be a normal thing. So yeah. I have to adjust here and mm. here and here and mm. here. Is it time management? Is it doing this? Is it doing this? So as, and because he was speaking with love, he was speaking not with uh, a judgmental spirit. Mm. It would help me to wake up and at one moment I'm like, no. Let me do it the right way. Let me do it. Okay, so um, I really want to draw lessons here mm. because sometimes as we speak, um, different people that are watching mm. need to be able to highlight some of these things. Yes. You're saying that re the polite uh, either rebuke or telling you of what you're doing wrong necessitated that you find a different way of doing that particular thing or changing. Yes. But had he just pointed fingers and said, you, you don't love me. This is why you keep doing these things. I've, I've told you time and again, and you're not doing it. Because then the human spirit becomes defensive. Yes. Then you're like, but this is how I know to do it, so I'm yes. going to continue doing it. Yes. So you continue hurting one another yes. because there was no maturity to know that, okay, I do not just attack her, mm. but I speak with soft words and politeness and respect mm. so that the other person can effect the change yes. because they see I care about them, I am bringing this out of love because I don't want to be hurt and I would want them to respond positively. Yes. Okay, that's beautiful. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, when he would bring up certain issues, I would, because I love him, mm -hmm. it would be easier for me to adjust and because he would come to me in a in a very mature and understanding way, I would mm -hmm. say, let me adjust here because I have to keep a relationship going. Mm -hmm. And time would come where I would not wish to be angry or annoyed because out there, I don't want to live a life which is different from who I am. Mm -hmm. I want to be myself. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you keep unforgiveness inside you, people are going to read something else because exactly. we are all, we are leaders. Exactly. People are going to see, they know at home something is happening because mm. you can't get out of the car. You can't hide, you can't hide. Side. You have to be exactly, <laughs> exactly. Either from the children, they're mm. going to see your, your expression, the way you do things and they will know something is not right. So mm. I would help myself to really enjoy myself. 
and be who I, I like am. that statement. I help myself yes. to enjoy myself. Yes. It's a sober choice that you make. It is. To help it yourself. Is. It is. Not to do it because I think where anger comes in, we are always angry at someone. Mm. We're always pointing a finger at someone. Either mm. they didn't make my life good or they didn't do things that collaborate with me. You take it upon yourself and say, my joy is my joy. It's an inside job. Yes. No one is going to give me the joy. Yes. Uh, but we can create happiness as a family, but for as long as there is no joy inside of me, mm. okay. And then one thing I've learned mm. from this conversation is, your forgi forgiving each other in a relationship, especially in a marriage, mm. does not just benefit the couple, but it benefits everyone else that That's is in right. their life. That's right. Everyone That's that you love yes, right. benefits from the forgiveness. That is because true. when you come out, then you are yourself yes. to share the fullness of yourself. That is true. But the moment there is unforgiveness, you are bottling in everything. You're holding on to mm. everything. Mm. And so everyone is getting a quarter or a half of you mm. or not just getting anything That's out true. of you. Mm. Okay. Uh, let, me, mm. let me touch on that briefly. Mm -hmm. You know, like we are leaders mm. and ministers to the people. You know, when you stand before the people and your heart is heavy, mm -hmm. you will not deliver. That's true. You will not impact any life because you're, you're ministering from a rim of pain. Mm -hmm. You're having issues in your heart and uh, also the joy that should have been, been shared. Mm. People are not going to feel that joy. They'll not feel that peace around you. So unforgiveness will affect not only you, mm. but even the people around you. Mm. Some, the people you lead. Yes, some mm. people even in their families where there's too much anger, mm -hmm. even animals suffer. <laughs> Find no, somebody kicking the dogs. Cups. Yes, kicking, exactly. even flasks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So they are looking for a way of how to express to the anger. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And now when it comes to the preachers, mm. if I'm a preacher and I have unforgiveness and mm. anger, mm -hmm. the message will change. So yes. you find instead you're abusing people, you're, you're, insulting you're backing people. at people. Yeah. I was watching a clip whereby the preacher was preaching mm -hmm. and he broke the podium. Oh. He, get, he was expressing. Like under a lot of anointing? Under a lot of what? I don't under. know what type of anointing. <laughs> I don't know what type of anointing that is. I don't know. <laughs> and I don't want to test it. <laughs> I want to be far away but from it. But that can yeah. shock even yeah, somebody true. watching. You see yeah. a, such a, a scenario. Mm -hmm. You get shocked and you come out of a service. That thing can never leave it your It can mind. never leave your mind. Yeah, so it, uh, unforgiveness and anger will affect ev your everything environment. Mm -hmm. The people mm -hmm. close to you, your children, mm -hmm. and you know everything. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you realize that um, uh, where I want us to go to your uh, upbringing mm. and where you grew up from and mm. how things were handled because I find that most times some of these things stem from where we grew exactly. up. Exactly. Yes, yes. yes, it can be part of your, uh, let me say, character traits. Like you are totally different from her extro extroverted, introverted. That can be a personality issue. But I think it also stirs up from who brought us up, mm. what kind of environment we grew up in. Mm. And if that environment was um, enhancing forgiveness mm. or just shunning forgiveness. Because mm. there are some homes mm. where it's all about backing, insults, beating. There is nothing like um, to soft talk. Mm -hmm. There is yes. nothing like politeness. There is nothing like respecting. Because even a child needs to be respected sure. understand why they are doing that particular thing mm. and maybe tell them it's not the right thing don't do it again mm. then if maybe they keep doing it then you bring the, 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 the stick because mm. I mean the Bible says that throw it away and you know you spoil, to, you, you spoil a child yeah. uh, but you see that people grow up to be who they were and where they came from mm. uh, what can you speak of your upbringing where you come from and how it helped you be this person mm. that can actually say i can reason better i can be polite i can you know i can forgive i can let go and i can build mm -hmm. thank you so much uh i i really want to thank god for my mother because mm. uh, uh she helped nurture me so much okay when I look at my background, it was not a good one. Because uh, we were abandoned by our father, mm. and he got married to another woman. We should talk about father, father abandonment. Why? Yes. Why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of, I don't know. There may be many reasons. That's <laughs> another topic. I know we will have to talk That's about that topic. sometime. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but when, when, when my father left my mom, mm. life became very challenging. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there was a time when he had to bring that woman in the house so mm. there were two wives my mom and the other second woman mm. and you know there was some instance of violence that i would see there mm. was a time i saw there was a fight in the house mm. 
where some of my cousins who didn't want this woman to come in the in the house wanted to chase her away so there was a real fight mm -hmm. and as a little kid i was watching all those things and definitely it it, it affects the it mind bothers you, yeah. but i thank god for my mom because the way she brought me up tamed me in a certain way because i would really become a bad person mm. wanting to revenge yeah everything yeah. you saw yeah. and i could see how my father there's a time he was so aggressive so abusive to my mom and were hearing all those mm. he would get drunk and speak all sorts of insults mm. to the point that one of my elder brothers came and you know attacked my father because it was too much mm -hmm. so but i i don't know why i never became violent where I never do, became do, a street have kid. You, or, has it ever crossed my, your mind to say, I will never be my father? I yes, will never be that kid. Yes, of man. yes. When I was growing up from mm. that little kid, mm. I purposed in my heart wow. and I said, I want to be a model father to my children. Wow. And I purposed, I said, I'll love my wife, mm -hmm. I'll build a home environment that is peaceful. That is peaceful. Mm. And I don't want to brag, but mm -hmm. we have a peaceful home. Well, I can, I can see it. Yes, Every, we have a peaceful. So, so from the time I set my eyes on you, I knew yes. that, that there was peace. Yes, there thank you. you. You know, there's some couples you look at and you're like, yeah, they're faking it. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Mm. Yeah, so my mom, uh, the foundation of mm. faith and the fear of God, mm. uh, she planted that in me at an early age. I think that's what helped tame my mind and direct me mm. in the ways of God. But uh, looking at this background I've shared with you, yes. any child can grow up to become wild. To be anything, you want to yes. revenge mm. or that impact. The way you saw your father do it, you also want to do it to mm. your children, you mm. want to do it to your wife and all that Because kind of it's thing. easy to yeah. do what you saw being done. Yes. Because then it's like a copy and paste. Exactly. But taking a different path of path that has been less traveled mm. where you've not seen your family travel and you're like okay I will choose peace mm -hmm. above all mm. I will choose forgiveness yeah. I will choose to love because uh, I mean the Bible tells us mm. that love does not keep records of wrong That's right. yes. so that means that you literally decide that records of wrong are going to be there but yeah. you decide to close that chapter and say mm. I'm not going to dwell on that because mm. it's not building True. I'm going to dwell on uh, forgiveness because that's what's going to build us uh, going going forward mm -hmm. on the side of the ladies mm -hmm. you know we are like um i don't know what to call it but sponges we sh we, we, we soak in everything yes. especially from our families mm -hmm. and sometimes we reproduce those things in yes. our families yes. how we bring up our children how we treat our husbands mm -hmm. how we even treat the people that we lead yes. uh, comes so much from what we saw and unless we decide a different path but mm -hmm. it really affects us so much mm -hmm. what was your background like Oh, thank you so much. Uh, my background, I was also raised up by a mother. I didn't stay with my father, but I'm Where so was grateful. Your father? My father just also left. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> actually, I hear he's in the nation. Generation of living fathers, and that, that's really so wrong yes. because again, the fathers that we are talking about, mm. that is from. Um, uh, that is from the generation of the baby boomers, mm. not even X generation, because X generations are, 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 much, are much younger. Mm. We have seen fathers from the X generation really doing everything to make sure that their home survived. Mm. That means they are trying to deviate from what the baby boomers did, mm. and they are trying to create better homes. Mm. But we have millennials right now, and Gen Zs, mm. and they are trying to do everything that is wild. Mm. And they are also repeating a generation of the lost fathers mm. and uh, the fathers that walked away from their homes. So I'm seeing a cycle here yeah. of mm. <laughs> which but, is not uh, I'm not cutting her mm. part, but mm. on that note, mm. I think uh, we need to pay attention to the boy child. Yes. Because we concentrate so much on the girl child. Oh, we tell girls what and to we, do. And we, ah, we have neglected, know what to do. We've neglected the boy child. Mm. True. So we have a generation. But do, the, do, do boy children, now we are deviating from the conversation. Yeah, but, I think but I'm putting it as a it's something worth, it's, it's to worth pay it. attention to. Because uh, do boy children... Are, are they receptive to guidance? Train a child mm -hmm. in a way that it should grow. Mm -hmm. Since childhood. They do not say yeah. train a girl mm -hmm. or train yes. a boy. Yes. Mm -hmm. train it's a, a child. child. So child. that tender age. Mm. Is when you impart exactly. into them. Yeah. Not waiting for them because after mm. they are men, mm. they are not a child. Mm. You can't train a man. Yeah. Yeah. A man. <laughs> 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 okay. So yeah. So I was telling you now. Mm. So being raised up by my mother, really, I found a comfortable place and mm. she was a very humble woman she's 
so responsible. She's she has a kind heart. Mm. Actually, I was amazed yesterday. My husband was coming for up from up country, and there is something that she did, mm. and. In her old age, she said, my son, I'm very sorry. Mm -hmm. Up to this time, she still, mm -hmm. she can bow down and, and say, I'm sorry, be able mm -hmm. to acknowledge her mistake. Yeah. That thing ministered to me. So that is wow. the kind of environment I grew up in. Wow. Uh, I didn't grow up in this kind of strife and what. Mm -hmm. I would just find myself obeying mm -hmm. because of the kind of the mother that, that raised me up. up. Yes, mm -hmm. she was not this quarrelsome woman. She was not this rough woman. Mm -hmm. So that is the kind of character I intended to copy that. Even now, mm. I don't back at my children. Mm. I've raised them in a good way. I train them. I tell them, do this and this, do mm. this and this, mm. just the way I was raised. So it is true. What you get from your parents is what you also pass on to your children. Mm. Yeah, thank you. They say, Oman mm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why, but uh, I see a bit of Chekubira there, you know, <laughs> bending to one side. But I, I think it's, um, it's true. When you are nurtured well, mm. then there is a way you turn into a responsible adult mm. that does not. Because when you look at uh, forgiveness, now even spewing into everything else apart from just relationships I think there is a way it saves us from so many things yes, yes. the things that we could have done yeah. the animals we could have turned into mm -hmm. had we not taken a step back to assess the situation mm -hmm. and say okay now uh, it's better I apologize in this mm -hmm. situation but a person who forgives find it so easy to even apologize true, true, true. yes that's true yeah. and a person that is unforgiving also finds it very hard to be meek and submissive or even to say, I am sorry, mm. I, 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 I did this. And now I, I want us to, uh, because when you're a leader, you also counsel other yeah. people. Mm. Yeah. Now we talk about the upbringing, but again now we come to now the things that you have had other people go through. Mm. While you're having a very blissful marriage because of the chosen parts that you have decided, mm. now we have, decided, we, have, uh, we have come to a conclusion that... It's not natural mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. learn to forgive mm -hmm. and, and ask for forgiveness. It's, a it's not natural. It's a decision. It's a, decision. Yes. It's a choice that you make according yes. to what you, you have told me. Yeah. The other people that are suffering uh, the, the consequences, what have they done wrong? Where have they gone wrong in their journey that has brought them to where they are? Because we've seen so many divorces. Mm. We've seen so many um, abandonments. We've seen so many broken homes. Mm. We've seen so many broken relationships or even broken partnerships. Mm. You know, if at home you cannot practice this, just like they say that charity begins at home, yes. that means at the workplace you're going to do that and even more. Mm. True. Because at home you're bound by blood, mm. but at work you are not bound by blood. That's mm. true. So you might as well say anything that you want to your boss mm -hmm. or say anything that you want to your supervisor and you will get away with it mm. and go. And then you leave that place saying, this place I was being haunted or they treated me bad, you go to another work area mm. and do the same thing. Mm. Because it's the same you that mm. is transplanting yourself from here mm. to another space mm. to do the same exact things That's that you true. were doing. Mm. And so you tend to feel like this is a curse that is actually following mm. someone. Mm. Um, <laughs> because they are not willing to apologize, mm. they are not willing to forgive, mm. they don't let go and they keep fighting and having conflicts. Mm. Where do those people go wrong before we even uh, go for a short break? Mm. Mm. Thank you so much. Uh, the Bible says, you know, Jesus was teaching and mm. he said that uh, it's very difficult that offenses will not come. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's in the book of uh, Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Mm. Jesus said unto the disciples, it is impossible, mm. but that offenses will come. What he was meaning here is that we cannot live in a society where there are no offenses. Mm. In one way or the other, you'll find yourself being offended mm. or you're offending somebody. Whether yeah. in the supermarket, where, yes. in anywhere. 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 Mm. Even uh, without even thinking about it, mm. sometimes your dress code is offending somebody. Mm -hmm. Of course. You know, so... We, we can't avoid that. Mm. But now, how do we deal with the offenses? Mm. It's very, very important. One thing that I want to help with the viewers and anyone listening is that don't keep issues. Mm. When, when something affects you, learn to see how you empty your heart immediately. Mm. Because if you keep piling up issues, like we are about, uh, how many here in this mm. room? Six mm. people. Mm. And if you offend me, she offends me, 
he offends me and all oh. and then i keep bottling and there are people who mm. keep uh, just yes. taking offense yes, yes. everywhere yes. and yes. you keep bottling all that mm. i tell you you begin to explode whether you like mm. it or not yeah. so it's important to uh, open up mm. immediately if some, somebody's doing something that's affecting you don't stay with yeah, it yeah speak mm. it out immediately mm. so why we are hearing all these uh, busting of anger mm. somebody cutting off somebody's neck somebody is, is doing this is revenging it's because mm. the person has over the years piled issues so many and kept mm. it in the heart mm. just like Cain kept that thing that and wanted to revenge mm. on the brother Abel mm. so it explodes definitely the anger will explode and in a wrong way in a wrong because way. explosion has never been good yes. you sure. can't explode in a good way yes. no, no, no. <laughs> so you 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 you, at, you deal with the anger at the root mm. immediately before it becomes bitterness yes wow yes. at the root before it becomes Bitter. bitterness that yeah. means you catch yourself in that moment mm. and assess the situation i know it's the hardest thing to do but again it's doable because other people have done it and if they did it then you can as well yeah. do it we're coming right back